Today we play the original solo adventure, Tunnels and Trolls, The City of Terrors. Just inside this 1984 book, it says it all started back in the mid-1970s. Role-playing was about to sweep the board as the top hobby in the USA. Rick Loomis of Scottsdale, Arizona and some friends of his had the idea of presenting a simple and easy-to-play role-play system. This system was called Tunnels and Trolls. Even now, 10 years later, it is America's premier solo role-playing game or system, offering a complexity and variety of adventures that far outstrips any of Tunnels and Trolls' rivals on the UK market, a.k.a. Dungeons and Dragons. But Tunnels and Trolls is not only a solo role-playing series. It is a complete role-playing system at a highly competitive price and is both simple to understand and to put into action. Lose yourself for hours in the Tunnels and Trolls world. So let's back up a little bit. First published in 1975 by Flying Buffalo, the second modern role-playing game published. It was written by Kent St. Andrew to be a more accessible alternative to D&D &D and is suitable for solitaire, group, and play-by-mail gameplay. Ken, a librarian in Phoenix, Arizona, didn't like the rules of D&D, &D, found the actual rules confusing, so he wrote down his own. He said, I just wanted something I could play with my friends at a reasonable price with reasonable equipment. First edition of Tunnels and Trolls was self-published in April 7, 1975. I almost said 1775. In June, Flying Buffalo Incorporated released a second edition of the game, and Tunnels and Trolls quickly became D&D's biggest competitor. So here are the editions in 75, 77, 79, 2005. There's a 30th uh, anniversary edition. And then in 2015, they, they produced a deluxe edition through Kickstarter. Sadly, I believe the 2015 edition and Tunnels and Trolls in general is no longer an active thing. They've got their website, curatedcorner.com. I will share it. But it seems like everything is out of print. Uh, here is, yeah, out of stock. I kind of want to get my hands on this. This looks pretty cool. I love the fact that it was a competitor to Dungeons & Dragons as well. I wonder how many times they got sued by TSR. They also have a free uh, game day version PDF that is not all of their rules, but is more rules than you get in a solo book if you buy a solo book. And this is free. I will uh, find this link again if I can and put it in the description so you can grab more of the rules. There's 16 pages of rules if you're in this. It looks like there's a little solo adventure inside. Maybe we'll have to take a look at that. Goblin Lake. This art is done by Liz Danforth. She's amazing, and this book has just got some amazing art. Actually, I think this book is not Liz Danforth. Yeah, cover and illustrations by Josh Kirby. So this book is very interesting. It's open-ended. Uh, I think they call it open air in the book, which I thought was kind of interesting. Never heard that term before. Uh, they're way ahead of their game. So it's, it's an open-ended solo game. It's played with the same rules that you would play with group with, basically a little bit stripped down. And uh, yeah, you just go. And so yeah, I've actually created an adventure ahead of time, uh, but we'll go through this really quick. You got all your standard attributes. The difference between this game and d and I don't think Ken St. Andrew liked the weird dice back in the day. So this is always using uh, six-sided dice. Um, didn't want to have to pay for 20s and 12s and, and 4s that nobody used. Okay, I get that. So you can see there's all the your basic attributes and with luck and speed, which may be different from normal stuff. The weight is 100 times your strength, and for some reason, 10 weight units equals one pound. I don't know why they did that. Probably, there's. I'm, a guess, I'm assuming there's a reason. Uh, maybe it's, it's more fine grain. So basically, if your strength is a 15, you can carry 1,500 weight possible, or 1,500 weights, uh, weight units. And, oh, there it is right here, 15. I would just pick that, too. I wasn't even looking at that. Which basically equates to 150 pounds is what you can carry. You've got humans, elves, dwarves, and trolls, which I find interesting as a unique ahead of their time choice for races. Your character types, at least in this book, are basically warrior and wizard based upon your stats. I picked a warrior um, just because I rolled some pretty good stats, and I'll show you that, that in a minute. Oh, and something to know, a warrior gets uh, twice the protection from armor and shields they use. That's their super ability. They can use more magical artifacts, but they can't cast magic. You got to roll up your coins with 3D uh, sixes as well. I believe I rolled 110. But here's the equipment list. This is weapons, 
Uh, I got to add to pick a weapon. This is how many dice you roll on the weapon if you have the strength and or dexterity requirements. Other things I could buy is warm, dry clothing, provisions, torches, rope, which I grabbed all of, and then armor. I was only able to get an arming doublet, which, which means I can take six hits for arming doublet because I am a fighter. Let's, let's go to my sheet. So my arming doublet, let me make sure I write this down. I can take six hits. So this is old Tato, the human warrior, level one. I rolled, I rolled an 18 on strength. That was awesome. Uh, and then I rolled 12, 9, 10, 12, 15, and a 6 for speed. I'm slow. But I'm strong and slow. Um, I have three golds left over, five silver pieces. I can carry 1,800 weight units, and I'm currently carrying 291. You can see my common spear can go 40 with a range. I brought a dirk as well. This is how many six-sided dice I roll plus my add. So it's three six-sided dice plus one. Or two six-sided dice plus one with the Dirk. So we're about to enter. We're about to enter the city of terrors. I don't know how well I'm going to do with this. It says that I could get lucky if I'm a level one guy, but uh, it's not really made for a level one guy. I don't know. I don't have anybody else but level one guy, old Tato. So we're just going to do it. This is the first open air solitaire adventure. Basically, we came by ship. We disembarked. We took a room. We tipped the clerk uh, twenty gold pieces to make sure that your things don't get ripped off. So between adventures, this is how you do it. You drop your stuff off in the room. You can change your clothes. You can exchange your weapons. Basically, you need to end uh, your adventures back at the hotel. There's ways, I guess, to leave the adventure at any time, but you lose anything that is in the hotel if you do that. Yeah, this adventure was designed with a well-rounded mid-level character in mind. However, at times, a first leveler will win out where a superhero loses. That's not, that's, there's no confidence. I don't, I don't feel good about that. But, uh, we're going to see what happens. This is the city square. Here is your hotel along with a carriage ready to take you to your ship if you choose to leave now. Tato does not want to leave. Tato wants to go north to the rogue route and go to the Black Dragon Tavern. It's been a long travel day. I need an ale. In front of you is a tavern. The sign above it announces that this is the famed Black Dragon Tavern. When you enter, you see that the Black Dragon offers to its customers nearly all the various modes of entertainment known to man. I can play a one-armed bandit in the corner? That's technologically advanced. You can arm wrestle with the man on your left? Hey, dude, you want to arm wrestle? Hmm, not sure. I can play poker with some toughs in the back room. Of course you can drink. Or leave the tavern and return to the city square. I'm gonna get a drink first and look around. At the bar are two smelly orcs. Ugh. They've had a few and they are making comments about you. They say that tracing your genealogy would doubtlessly lead you to a kennel. If you'd like to fight them, go to 203. I don't want to fight yet. I haven't even had my beer. And I definitely don't have a panic spell because I'm a warrior. So I'm gonna ignore them. Let me finish this ale. Bad choice. You obviously do not see the orcs put that Mickey in your drink. Huh? Have your con and fight them now. They have a combined monster rating of 80. Okay, let's go over combat really fast first. Um, anything over 12 in strength, luck, or dexterity goes, at, goes to my ad. So I check my dude. And I've got, I'm six over in strength. I'm not over in dexterity. I'm not over in luck. Anything below nine is a negative when fighting. So luckily I'm not below nine. So my personal adds um, is six for my spear and also for my dirk. I got I to gotta decide which weapon I'm using. I'm going to pull my spear out and start stabbing these dudes. They have an MR rating of 80, which means I'm pretty much going to die. So let's just stick MR 80 here. Mr. Tato is going to have lasted about, say, 15 minutes inside of the City of Terrors. Monsters get a monster rating, which gives you a number of dice at an eight. They get to roll nine dice, nine six-sided dice, uh, and then you add the two up. So let's, I get, I'm using, what I say, I'm using my spear, so I get three plus seven. They're going to get nine. So let's do, let's go here, let's go three plus seven. And these guys get nine. They don't get any pluses. Ha! <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna roll all. 
37 to 16. They beat me. I'm already down. Oh, by the way, when your constitution hits zero, you're dead. I'm already down to five. Uh, great. 37 to 16. What is that? 21 points difference. Oh, I forgot to add their ads. Monsters also get ads like yours. The number one half of its monster rating rounded up. That can't be right. There's no way, but let's just, I think that's a 40. <laughs> which means it's a 77, which they, these guys just obliterated me. So I pick my weapon, roll my dice, do my ads. If you had the larger number, I subtract the value. Da, da, da. If they had the larger number, if they had a larger number, then I subtract 12 points from damage for your leather armor. If you're wearing it, it protects you every turn as long as you wear it. I wasn't wearing leather armor. I was taking, I've got an arming doublet, which takes six. So they 47, 77, they're 60. So Tato Jr. arrives in the City of Terrors. Tato Jr. arrives in the City of Terrors knowing that his father was killed within a few minutes of entering the City of Terrors, but he comes anyway. He wants to take the rogue route and go to the Black Dragon Tavern. Not necessarily to get revenge, but just to see what's going on. He also knows, don't sit down with orcs at the bar. Tato Jr. decides he wants to play the one-armed bandit, the technological marvel in this city. This one-armed bandit will work only with money of any any type, not attributes. <laughs> Write down your bet when you're ready. I'm going to stick a gold piece in there. One gold piece. I pull the one-armed bandit. If I get three numbers in a sequence, I get half as much as I bet. If I get a pair, I double my bet. If I get trips, I get four times my bet. Doubles! Booyah! Couldn't use a D&D dice roller because it doesn't do this. I just won two gold. I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got three gold pieces now. I'm going to bet two gold pieces and pull it one last time just to see what happens. Cha-ching. Four, five, six. No, sequence. Yeah. And I said I bet two, so I just came away with four gold. I bet one, which was two, so I got, boom, I just enriched myself, boys. Play the one-armed bandit when you stop by the Black Dragon Inn. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good, <laughs> except for when I felt rough hands upon you the moment you stepped from the tavern. Suddenly your head feels like it's going to explode and colored lights dance before your eyes. As you lapse into unconsciousness, you hear one of your attackers speak. Well, Marek, we did very well this evening. When you awaken later, you remember that Marek is the name of the monster rogue in this city. Hmm. Well, I better play it safe head back to the tavern. I don't want to end up like my paw. You are refusing an adventure? The gods are maddened by this. They curse you into going berserk in your next combat situation. You go back into the tavern and demand directions to the home of the Master Rogue. You have blood in your eye, and they quickly point you in the right direction. You loosen your weapon from its sheath, the old spear sheath. You recall a father asking you to run when you can, and that it doesn't mean that you're weak if you turn the other cheek, and that you don't have to fight to be a man. But Papa, I sure hope this time you would understand. As you pass along this road, you notice a strange glowing in the glen to your left. Well, I'm going to investigate because I don't even really want to go get my face smashed in by this guy anyway. So 132. You come upon a clearing. In it is a large white metallic craft that looks somewhat like a crab, sans claws. A hatch opens and two men come rolling out, locked in combat. They sprint apart and each other draws a sonic sword. 
When this weapon touches an opponent, it releases enough sound that the vibration causes damage to the body. As you watch, both men receive blows from the weapons. In your head, you hear someone calling for help. You know it is telepathy, but you can't decide which man is calling for help. Heads, black. Tails, white. Heads, black. You take out your weapon and cut the man in white down, or at least you try to. He turns and attacks you. The sonic sword will shatter any armor you wear in two combat turns. This man, Ron, Ran, has three attributes. Strength 35! <laughs> oh no. He is an extraterrestrial criminal who has overpowered his guard, Rent, the man in black. So it looks like I'm doing the right thing, but I'm going to die. And he is seeking to escape. He has no armor, and his combat adds are 37. The Sonic Sword gets three dice plus five. 37. Three, 37. <clears throat> I think I needed a higher level character. What are my ads? Seven. Not 37. Seven. I need to find me a level one Tunnels and Trolls game. Let's do this. Blink. <coughs> oh, no. Sorry. It's clear. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Clear. <coughs> <laughs> Even better. Oh, my goodness. That is not good. He beat me, which means I take 12. It doesn't matter. My constitution's only a 10. I think my... I'm going to take 6 off of my armor. Um, so 16. Yeah. I just got killed again. That's a picture of what I wish had happened. The man in black survived. And the man in white dead. But I'm dead instead. Unless I'm missing something, this is just very tough for a level one guy. Uh, it doesn't really tell you on the book. Well, it tells you inside the book that it's a mid-level character. Uh, and I wanted to roll up a level one guy. So maybe I should have rolled up a mid-level character. I'm going to try. I think I'm going to go buy another book that's level one. Maybe something, you know, for a lower level. But I like the system. It's interesting. I hope I gave you a quick taste. I think I'm done uh, with the sample. Let's look at the wandering. We never reached an intersection. So I wanted to show you that uh, mechanic. If you reach in, oh, there, he, there they are again. There's a, these guys are in this a lot. It's a really cool system. It's very wide open, open air, as they call it, or open world, as we would call it today. This wandering people. So anytime you reach an intersection, you roll on the wandering people table. It's different than wandering monsters. It's wandering people. It's a list of motley crew that one might find in a city the size of Goal with a city of terrors. Also, someplace in the book that tells you that these guys can level up if you want them to get stronger so that as your adventure goes, the adventure gets tougher. Um, I don't believe that any of these can be your allies, which maybe they can. So they suggest making up cards for every single one of these guys. Uh, every, and every time you come to an intersection, you pull off the top card. I think earlier it referenced rolling for it, but maybe it's just a... Let's see how many there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. Well... Yeah, so it's it's basically a table of wandering people, wandering monsters, and uh, none of them look like they're too good. Well, here's a medic. Yeah, here's a bully. Here's a tax collector. You have to give him stuff. So pretty cool stuff. Anytime you get to an intersection, I, unfortunately, both Tato and Tato Jr. never even reached an intersection. Uh, Tato was killed in within 15 minutes of reaching the city, and Tato too made it at least uh, about 25 or 30. So not for the uh, faint at heart, but this was fun. Flying Buffalo, Tunnels and Trolls, the City of Terrors. I'll probably do some more Tunnels and Trolls later in the future. Very fun. Thanks for watching, guys. We got I got an unboxing of a very cool game coming up. You don't want to miss it. Come back and see me. Peace.